20, 25, 45. That's not really enough to get a Burp Street professional license. But I'm going to show you a lot of tips in this video on how you can make Burp Suite community act a little more like Burp Pro. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna start with something that is super crucial to me, and I'm speaking about Burp Suite's search functionality. So imagine that you're browsing a web application, you're clicking a couple of buttons, whatsoever. You might have been doing this for 10 hours at this point, so you've collected a ton of requests, right? And then there's this one thing that you want to go back to. So, for example, this review over here it says, Fry liked it too, and you're wondering. I don't really remember where this was sent. So let's just go into Burp. Use the proxy functionality because we've collected all the requests, right? And you jump straight into here, click on the fill the bar, and you want to search for it. And then, bam, fill the by search term, pro only. It's kind of sad, isn't it, right? We kind of do that. But anyway, let's click cancel. Make sure to go to Burp Suites Extender tab which is this one over here, you go to the BAP store and you can search for EG Flow being an absolutely amazing substitute for the search functionality or you can search for Logger++. Plus Plus. So this is another one that you can use and I want to quickly show you how to work. So Flow, I was having Flow already installed during my, my last couple of clicks. So in Flow, this is actually quite similar to Burp Suites Proxy. You just go on the filter bar, you say, hmm, I wanted to search for Fry, right? So I hit that, click enter over here, and what I do see is that there are two requests, and one of them seems to be the one I'm interested in. If I'm pulling this up over here, I do see Fry like the two, this is the response that I was interested in, and I could super easily search for that. All right, let's have a look at Logger++. Logger++ has a little more functionality than Flow. And for both of them, I would recommend you to check out their manual pages to learn how they work and what they can do. Because they can actually do a lot more than just searching. But back to searching a string. So in here in the filter bar, I'm going to say, this is probably inside the response. So I'm going to say response body contains and the string I'm searching for is fry. So let's see if that works. We hit enter and we already see our result coming back. And if I click on that, we do see that this is exactly the same response. You might already see that Logger++ plus plus seems to be a little more complicated on this end, but on the other hand, it just has way more functionality than Flow. Depending on your needs, make sure to check out both of them. Absolutely amazing extensions. All right, so up to the next one. Who of you has encountered this before? You browse a website and you go, for example, to a login form. Just type in any password email combination right now. You click on login. This is incorrect. Doesn't matter right now. And we see a post request over here. And you're wondering, is this post request susceptible to a cross-site request forgery attack? And what you usually can do in Burb is if you go over here and you say right click engagement tools, you can see a little line that says generate CSERF POC. And in the same line over here, it says pro version only. So Burb community being once again, nay, 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 this is not for you. You are not allowed to use that. Okay, so what else can you do? And there's something neat that you can do, and that is using this github repository and this is coming by a guy called mert tasky and muhammad ali yurdegil and i've already set this up over here and i want to show you how this works so this is basically the application after i have downloaded the github repository and i'm running this right now with my python http server and then you just go back to burp suite you go to request of your choice and you say, okay, I'm going to use that entire piece right now. 
I'm coming over here and pasting this and in my case right now this is actually a JSON body but let's make this a little more simple email equals test and password equals whatever admin and right now we say okay I want to get a pack I'm clicking on generate pack form and what we're having over here is a ready to use HTML that you can use on your attacker server on your um, local host to see if the target of yours is acceptable to a CSERF vulnerability. Next up is Burp Suites Collaborator. So first of all, if you have no idea what the collaborator is doing, make sure to check out this page that we're seeing over here, which is uh, giving you a quick explanation about all its features. But let's quickly look at this image down below here to give you a rough idea. So basically in a lot of times when you send a request via Burp Suite to an application, you're getting a response back. But this is just the direct response. There could be some sort of out of band communication where the backend uses your initial request and requests further HTTP endpoints coming from the backend. And this external interaction can be collected by Burp Suite Collaborator. So basically Burp Suite Collaborator is just a window that you can open up and it shows you if there is any interaction coming in by the application. And with that, you can monitor and control the interaction. If we look at Burp Suite, you would usually go to the Burp tab in the top and you would go to Burp Collaborator Client. But as with all the other features that we've seen so far, this is for pro version only. So what can you do? And I want to hop over here and show you a service called Request Bin. And Request Bin is doing something similar. So let's say you're expecting an application to send further requests on the backend and you want to try it out. So you go to Request Bin, you create a new HTTP bin, you copy the bin URL and you send the request to the application. If there is some further HTTP requests going on at the back, you would see that in request bins web UI. And I've already prepared that. So what I'm doing right now, I'm playing backend service over here and I'm sending a post request to request bin. And if I hit enter, you will see that I get a quick response over here. And if I go back to request bin, I refresh the page, I do you see that, yeah, there was actually a request coming in. And it gives me a lot of information as you can see right over here. So this works for HTTP and DNS. Burp Collaborator additionally has an SMTP feature, which is not supported by request bin. Next up, we talk about Burp Suite's Intruder. I gotta say, I really love the Intruder functionality of Burp Suite Professional. And this is probably one of the most used tools for myself, but if you cannot afford it, I want to show you an alternative that works out pretty well too. So let's have a look at this login form once again. I'm sending this to the application and this is obviously incorrect. And if we have or see that request over here, we might be tempted to perform something like a password brute force attack. So what I would usually do is I would click Control I and send this to Burp Suites Intruder, which opens up this window over here. I would then most likely clear all of that and say, um, I want to actually mark the entire password field and I am going to add this to my payload insert points and then go over to payload and in here I would choose a password list. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to use null payloads right now, which basically sends 1000 times right now, nothing to the application. Nothing meaning the request is not changing. So let's see what happens if I click on start attack. Yeah, it tells me already the community edition is a demo version to give you an idea basically. Some functionality is disabled and attacks are time throttled. And this is important here. What does it mean? I click on OK. And what we're seeing over here is that I'm roughly sending one request per second. 
and you keep waiting and waiting and waiting and remember I have set this to 1000 requests so this is super boring I mean who wants to sit here and wait for hours and a thousand requests is not a lot like in an actual password brute force you'd probably send I don't know like a couple of million requests to the web app right so this is just not working with the community edition so I'm going to click exit the current attack and I'm going back to the proxy over here and I want to show you something neat you can use turbo intruder and turbo intruder is free to use you can also get that in the extender tab if you go to the search bar and type in turbo here we go turbo intruder already installed okay proxy next up is you select your request in the proxy tab go down to the request and do the exact same thing so you mark the spot that you want to attack and then you click right click send to turbo intruder and I mean, I'm honest with you here, this is a little more confusing. We do see a Python script that is used by Turbo Intruder down below here. So you have to have at least a little bit of Python skills, or you can always just um, check out the example scripts that James Cattle, the developer of Turbo Intruder, has put down in his or Portswigger's GitHub repository. But for now, I don't want to go into the specifics of Turbo Intruder. I just want to show you the speed of it. So I'm having a couple of concurrent connections being set to 50 right now and 100 requests per connection. And if I click on attack right now, I just quick want to point out that I have inserted a word list over here that is the Xedo Nat 10 million passwords top 1000 list coming out of the sacklist repository so i'm going to send a thousand words in the password field right now and i also want to point out that we won't see a lot of results because in order to do that you have to set the handle response method down below here to do what you want it to do but for the sake of this video i just want to show you that this is super fast and i hit attack right now and we do see that we do have 50 connections in parallel right now with roughly 17 20 19 it's fluctuating requests sent per second and at this point we're already at 400. if you think back at this point in time previously using community intruder we we're probably at 10 requests being sent so now we already add 600 and as I am only having 1000 passwords in my password list that I was using, we almost threw enumerating passwords. And here we go 920, 970, 1000, done. And this is it. This is Turbo Intruder. Make sure to check it out. The next really nice Burp Pro feature that I want to touch right now is Burp Suite's scrawler. And, and scanner and what we usually do in bird pro is we go over here new live task and you can click on live outed and this would scan actively scan the web application searching for a ton of different vulnerabilities but yeah this is pro only and there's a couple other things for example if you go to target and you say hey, I want to scan that and you right click engagement tools we saw this before you can for example discover content which searches for additional directories and paths that are not directly linked okay so those two things do not come with burp community and they are really nice I mean if we quickly look at for example this view over here this is uh, demo of the results that burp suite scanner is producing we do see for example os command injection and if we assume right now that this would have been found on our target app we see this pretty nice overview right we got some details some background some remediation advice all of that we see the actual request it is marked what the issue was yada yada, yada. So that is really cool 
but because of the fact that it is that cool, it is not included in Burp Suite community. However, you can use a couple of different tools. And in that video right now, I don't want to go into the details of all those, but I've crafted a blog post for you that actually goes into way more detail than all of the stuff that we've seen in this video right now. And in here we're covering search again, CSERV, collaborator, intruder, but we're also covering burp suite scanner. So make sure to check out this write up and use the tools that I've mentioned right in here. All right, so I want to quickly give you a summary before ending this video. If you are a professional penetration tester, there's probably no way around Burp Suite Professional. If you're an occasional buck bounty hunter or you're just starting out in the field, Burp Suite Community is fine. Like, there's no need for you to spend 400 US dollars a year on Burp Suite Professional. And in that video, I just wanted to show you how you can make more out of your Burp Suite community. What I definitely do not want you to do is to go ahead and search for any sort of cracked versions of Burp Suite Professional. That is illegal. Do not do that. And yeah, use the advice I gave you here to improve your Burp Suite community. In the end, it's all about getting used to the tool. It's way more important to get a lot of experience rather than having Burp Suite Professional. That alone is not going to make a good penetration tester out of you. All right, with that, make sure to jump by my Patreon. Please subscribe somewhere over here in the top right corner, and I will see you folks again pretty soon. Thanks for watching.